Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing, how to generate passive income from a diversified portfolio of high-yield funds. And speaking of high-yield, how does 55% yield sound? More like a dream, right? Or something crazy, but it is reality with this ETF that I'm going to review in today's video. So this is a US listed ETF, by the way. So I know most of my viewers are Canadian. This is listed on the US stock market, which means it's pretty good for an RSP or Lira. That's where I would put it because there's no 15% withholding tax. So today's video, I will review a video, uh, sorry, an ETF that I've been getting a lot of questions about that I recently invested in. So you probably could guess it's the CLIP ETF. So stock symbol KLIP, the Crane Shares China Internet and Covered Cost Strategy ETF. So we're going to figure out or look, do a deep dive into what this ETF is all about. Shouldn't take more than five to 10 minutes because it's not very, a very hard uh, strategy or ETF to understand. And then we're going to try to figure out how they could give out such high over 50 percent yield which is pretty insane this etf has been around for about six months now or something like that so we'll check it out in detail and then we'll talk to one of the main guys at crane shares and we'll discuss with him uh what this etf is all about the strategy the objectives how in the world they could sustain such high distribution and what exactly is their cover cost strategy because that's very important that we understand what the actual cover cost strategy of this ETF is. So let's get to it. Let's see what this ETF is all about. All right, everyone, I am on Crane Chair's official website here. Let's check out Clip together. Very simple ETF, everyone. They basically do covered calls on the KWEB ETF, which is also from Crane Shares. It's a Crane Shares CSI China Internet ETF. So let's just stick with Clip for a quick second here. You'll see that the uh, management fee or the MER total is 95 basis points, 0.95. Uh, it is a very, a, a fairly new ETF, came out at the beginning of the year here, but it's already past 15 million in AUM. So I think that's just gonna keep growing and growing. So they're basically writing covered calls on the KWEB ETF, right? If you actually look at holdings, very simple guys, it owns uh kweb and then all you see is a bunch of calls right call call options so very very simple etf but to understand what you're actually investing in we have to look at what kweb is so this is the the etf that they're writing calls on so this is actually a massively big etf very very liquid 4.6 billion uh etf here and this basically is a chinese uh internet companies or a chinese a tech etf that's basically what it is. So if we actually look at the holdings of what this ETF has, and this is what you're actually investing in when you're investing in either KWEB or Clip, uh, these are the companies. These are the top 10 companies, and you'll probably recognize the first two, uh, Tencent and Alibaba. So those are basically the two biggest that represents like 20% of the ETF. These are really the big technology or internet companies in China. So this is literally a Chinese-centric technology internet focused etf so uh very very different right this could give you some exposure outside of no north america and really give you a little bit of uh, regional diversification in your portfolio so on the american stock market i think the thing you could compare kweb to is probably something like an xlk uh, etf which is technology companies on the u.s market so that's kind of like the comparison. So it's just the same thing, but on the Chinese side, all right, in China. So uh, yeah, very, very interesting. And why is the yield so high? So the current distribution yield is 55.74%, but that's based on the latest distribution, which is monthly. So if you scroll down here and you actually go to distributions, you could see the monthly distribution. So the one in January um, is was only 56 cents, well, only 56 cents. That's actually pretty high. But remember, the ETF came out in mid-January. So the February one, $1.16. That's in one month, guys. $1.16 per share, $1.09, $1.03. Now a little bit lower at $1.86. And this is probably because volatility has been going down. That would be my guess. And remember that these distributions are really going to be 100% based on volatility, the volatility of KWEB. And speaking of which, that is why Clip is so interesting and has such high yield, because if you actually click on presentation, you'll get you'll get this 
uh, this presentation here. And the thing, you know, you could scroll down and read it. It goes into what a cover cost strategy is. You guys already know what a cover cost strategy is. But basically what they're trying to say, and this is what where it's really interesting, they're showing how volatile KWEB is. I mean, this is KWEB versus the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 2000, the S&P 500. It's not even a comparison, guys. KWEB, of course, it's just Chinese tech companies. It's going to be much, much more volatile or much more, there's much more price swings than the NASDAQ 100, for example, which is pretty much the most volatile index in the, in, in the U.S., but you see that here, 30 and KWEB is a lot, a lot higher here. Um, this just shows the correlation between the different indexes. It has, it'll have low correlation, which just means like KWEB won't really follow what the S&P or NASDAQ does, which is normal. It's a completely different region. Um, this is very interesting. You'll see how crazy the implied volatility or the, the premiums you could get, how high it is here. And uh, this particular one, struck me. I mean, this dumbfounded me. This is the option premium if you're writing an at-the-money option. Okay, so if you're writing an at-the-money option, which we know is the most aggressive call option you could write, you're giving up all the upside, but you're getting the biggest premium on KWEB as an average. The average is just under 4% a month, guys, monthly. This is monthly at-the-money option premium, which means that let's just say 4%. It's a little bit under that four times 12 that's per month so times 12 is the average you could expect in terms of yield or premiums that you collect is about 48 percent pretty pretty crazy right now it's higher probably because obviously as we could see from this chart it's the volatility is even higher than the average if we actually look at the stock chart at kweb it started at about 10 years ago it started about 26 bucks now it's under that so, and you see a big, big, sharp increase to $102 in February of 2021. We know February 2021 was the year of, you know, the interest rates went to zero because of COVID and there was a big speculation bubble, nice little bubble there in 2021. So now it's actually down under $25. So I feel that this is very interesting, not only for the high yield, but also the growth potential because, you know, you could see the stock price, it's pretty much almost at the lowest it's ever been. So I think it's a great time to get into it now, but uh, I'm very, very skeptical and pessimistic, especially about China. I don't invest in, in China at all. But what I like about Clip is that, and my I'm guessing here, but I'm going to ask the uh, the representative at Crane Shares. I'm assuming they're writing at the money premium. So you're really giving up the up, upside. What you're saying is I don't really believe in these companies. I really want to take advantage of the high volatility and get paid high yield every single month. That makes more sense to me when it comes to this style of ETF. And you're obviously getting big, big, big premiums here every single month. Of course, you could expect varying distributions, right? It's based on the volatility. If volatility starts going down, you're gonna expect a lower, lower distribution. So very interesting ETF here. You know, in my opinion, the best way to play this, number one, is not to have this as a, as a primary position. I definitely will never make this as a primary or foundational position in my portfolio, but it could be a great overall yield booster or it'll be great as a secondary position. So really grow your, your, the overall yield of your portfolio, but be careful. This could be very volatile and I would only ever make it a secondary position and as a canadian i would only ever keep it in the rsp or the lira because there would be no 15 percent withholding tax on the income this is all about income you're getting big income so 15 getting not 15 percent uh because of withholding tax if you would keep this in a tfsa or a non-registered account 15 percent of it would be gone so this is great for an rsp as a diversifier as a secondary position pretty cool concept here uh, seems like they're getting more and more popular, the, these covered, these aggressive covered cost strategies for income investors. And it makes complete sense with something really, really volatile like a KWEB. So let's talk to uh, one of the main guys at Crane Shares and let's talk to him about this ETF. All right. Very special guest today. I have with me James Mond from Crane Shares, head of capital markets. So uh, James, thanks so much for doing this today. We're going to talk all about Clip, a very unique income oriented uh, ETF, which is gaining a lot of popularity, um, which basically does cover calls on your very popular KWEB ETF. How's it going, James? Welcome to the channel. 
Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, really glad to be here. And uh, yeah, things are things are going well. We're a lot of excitement around uh, Clip. And and um, again, thanks again for the opportunity. Yeah, we'll we'll talk all about it. And just for my audience to know, you're actually head portfolio manager. You're the guy who actually is managing the calls or the covered calls on this ETF, right? That's right. Yeah. That's so um, perfect. Yeah. So so this was. Uh, yeah, so my team manages most of the strategies here here at Crane Shares, uh, including K Web as well as uh, now Clip and several other strategies that we have in the market. So um, quickly tell me about Crane Shares. Sure, if you don't sure. mind. So Crane, yeah, happy to do that. So Crane Shares is uh, started just just under ten years ago. We have our ten year anniversary uh, next month, actually in July, and that was when K Web was launched, which is our China Internet Fund. And KWeb was really, uh, or sorry, Crane Shares was really started as an asset manager designed to uh, provide access to uh, China uh, and, and Chinese investments. Uh, our founder, John Crane, uh, is a serial entrepreneur, uh, had lived and, and started many businesses in China uh, for a number of years before coming back to the US and was really excited about the investment opportunity in China, seeing the growth, the population growth, the economic growth, uh, all of the opportunity there, and talking to friends and family about that opportunity. But also realizing that it was really hard at that time uh, for U.S. investors to make direct investments in, in Chinese equities and, and get that access. So the idea behind uh, starting Crane Shares in, as an asset manager was to help provide that access to that kind of harder to access market. And um, and you know John and, and a few other uh, key partners that he had at the time uh, launched K Web uh, to provide that access, and then KBA and a few other. Uh, China focused thematic strategies uh, and really, you know, had this goal of becoming experts on investing in China. Uh, we provide a, a daily note China last night that that talks about kind of recent developments in the country, uh, as well as, you know, give a bit of a unique perspective that's maybe a little bit different, unvarnished versus what you might see in the Western media. Um, and, and it really built the business on our expertise in uh, in China, in investing in China. And K Web has obviously, you know, become a household name uh, as far as uh, an ETF to provide that access. Yeah. So K Web, correct me if I'm wrong, is really your flagship fund. It's about to celebrate its 10 year anniversary in just a couple of months. I think in the end of July of 2013 right. is when it came out. So about to celebrate its 10 year anniversary. And this is a really this is a big ETF. So obviously, you know, most of my viewers are Canadian, but I also have some Americans and us Canadians. We do invest on the U.S. stock market. This is a really, really big ETF. Of, of course, I'm talking about K Web here, which we're going to discuss very briefly because Clip is actually writes covered calls on K Web, so we need to understand what that is. So the assets I have here is about four and a half billion in AUM. So this is a very big ETF. That's right. And as we know, very, very, you know, the bigger it is, the more the deeper the options market is. So KWeb, very interesting premise. This is a very, very unique ETF that really invests in. It, it's an ETF that invests in China or Chinese technology or internet companies. So right there on the homepage, you say like these companies are kind of similar to Facebook and Amazon and Twitter and Google. So tell me a little bit about the K Web ETF. What exactly are you investing in when you're investing in KWEB or K Web? Sure. And I think the simplest way to think about it is, is just we're investing in the largest uh, Chinese tech companies that are driving the consumer economy in China. Uh, it was the first fund, the first US fund to hold shares of Alibaba, for example. Um, so Alibaba, Tencent, Pinduoduo, some of these very large household names that, that are ubiquitous in China. Uh, most Chinese consumers are, you know, using these technology platforms, uh, these e-commerce platforms to interact in various ways. And it's really incredible to think about um, the level of connectivity. It's it's almost hard, I think, for, for Westerners to understand the, the level of interaction that, that the average, uh, you know, Chinese consumer has with, with the app. Everything is done on the phone through technology on the app, and it's highly efficient and highly integrated. And it's just a phenomenal opportunity. Um, these companies um, are, are really integral as the, the economy grows in China, as the middle class grows in China, and there are more people um, you know, with more resources to put to work. They're doing uh, the majority of that through these companies and these platforms. Yeah, so here's the, here's the top 10 holdings. I, I, you could see my screen, right? So like you said, Tencent, uh, Alibaba, these are the big ones. So this is not an equal weight. This is a market cap weighted one. So I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong here, the bigger companies are going to have the bigger percentages, kind of like 
a NASDAQ 100 style where it's market cap weighted, right? That's correct. Yeah, okay. that's fair to say. And and it is um, a combination. I, I think you can see here that the, the mm -hmm. number tickers are Hong Kong listings and the letter tickers yeah. are US ADR listings. So we're currently uh, just about 70% uh, Hong Kong listings of these companies and about 30% of the US ADR listings. Um, and, and there's a lot that um, that these companies have done over the years to to bring these companies public and make them investable and, and provide that access. And um, so we're, you know, we're invested. Again, these are all publicly traded uh, shares in, in these underlying companies, whether they're Hong Kong or US. Very interesting, very interesting. So that's K-Web. Now we'll talk a little bit about um, Clip. So Clip is basically an ETF that writes covered calls on K-Web. So tell me a little bit about the premise behind it. Why did you guys come out with Clip? What's what's the objective of this ETF or like what kind of investor is this geared towards? Sure, sure. So you know, Clip was designed really as an income strategy. Um, and I know that's a focus for a, a lot of your, your viewers. Yeah. And it's something that, um, you know, K-Web being so growth oriented, um, you know, people love the long-term story. They love the long-term fundamental idea of, you know, investing in China tech and, and that, you know, heavy growth potential, but it's volatile as any kind of growing market. Um, you see a lot of volatility and you see, um, you know, when that growth happens, it's really phenomenal. But while you're waiting for that growth to happen, it can be challenging. It's a bit of a roller coaster ride. And after hearing this feedback from a lot of our investors, we thought about providing something to the market that um, provides some more stability, allows an element of exposure to China tech and, and China broadly, but also has the element of income uh, that um, you know, provides that stability and that kind of other end of the barbell. So what we ended up doing was seeing the volatility and, and having that be a challenge for most people, we decided to turn that into a strength. Uh, in the form of Clip and monetize that volatility by selling covered calls on KWeb. So the fund itself is really simple. We wanted to keep it as simple as possible and kind of leverage the um, the pre-existing kind of foundational pieces that we had. And the fact that uh, we are the managers of the KWeb ETF itself, it just made sense. And given the options volume on uh, KWeb, options on the K-Web fund itself, the notional value of open interest in those options is about $6 billion. So again, very large, very deep, very liquid options market on K-Web. And it just made sense naturally to uh, to launch this product clip with a covered call strategy on K-Web. And what we do is we just hold the underlying ETF shares. So we're not holding each individual component of the index or trying to replicate it some other way. It's about as pure play as possible. So we hold K-Web shares and they represent 100% of the value of the fund. And then we write uh, options, we write at the money calls uh, on that on that K-Web exposure that we hold. So we end up with uh, the K-Web performance uh, as well as this options premium uh, that we collect approximately every 30 days. Um, we, we are a QCCO, which is a qualified covered call option strategy. So there are specific parameters around that QCCO structure that we like to follow. Uh, and one of those parameters is that we have to be writing options more than 30 days from expiring. So you'll see a lot of the options that we're writing uh, tend to start when they go into the fund, they tend to start around somewhere in the low 30s, 31, 33, 35 days, something in that range. Um, yeah. And then we're also writing at the money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have it right here. So I'm sharing my screen here. And it, it is a very simple ETF, very simple strategy. Um, as you could see, you know, Clip basically holds uh, KWeb, and then you have some cash, and then you have all the call options here. So um, what you said was interesting. So of course, you know, my my viewers already know this, but the more volatile something is, the more rich these option premiums are. And I did allude to the fact in my introduction to, you know, before the Q&A that if you click on presentation, you guys actually right here on your website, it actually shows the volatility of K-Web. It compares the volatility to, for example, NASDAQ 100, S&P 500. And I was floored when I saw how much more volatile K-Web really is. It makes sense. Obviously, these are, these are technology companies in China and the technology sector in itself is always a little bit more volatile. And this is in China only. So very, very volatile, which means very, very rich premium. So you kind of touched about this. I want to talk about, so I feel this is very important to understand this ETF. And just uh, before we do that, the MER is 0.95 here and the AUM is growing rapidly. I mean, it's already at uh, 18 and a half uh, million here approximately. And the ETF is 
like not even six months old or about six months old or something like that. It started in 2023. So it's gaining momentum. So what is the, and you kind of touched, touched upon it already. So you guys are writing at the money calls. Are they always at the money when you're writing these, these calls on K-Web? Yes. So when, when you use the term at the money and there's a couple, and, and I might toss some terms out here and, and yeah. feel free to let me know if you'd like me to kind of clarify or define anything, but you know, you think about this, this concept of moneyness and options. So yeah. when you say at the money, you're basically within a strike of the price of the underlying security that, that underlies the option. So it's, it's, you know, within the range of one strike and you'll generally see when you look at the options that we've written, there are kind of two wrinkles versus the standard listed options that make them really optimal for this strategy. Uh, so they are flex options, which allows us to uh, adjust some of the parameters of the options versus a standard listed option uh, that you might see trading on, a, uh, on an exchange. And one of those parameters is that um, with, a, with an ETF option or a single stock option, traditionally the listed version is American style, which means it can be executed at any point between when the option is written and when the option expires. So there's always that risk of having stock called away. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to avoid that risk. So we decided to write these flex, flex options as European style, okay. uh, which prevents uh, the risk of having the stock called away. It just adds a little operational simplicity uh, to, the, to the fund. Uh, and then the other thing that the flex option allows us to do is write at specific strikes. Uh, so typically you see you know, strikes at the figure or the half, um, but you don't necessarily see these very detailed exact strikes. So when we have a new create come in, we're taking delivery of essentially the fund is a, in a de facto way purchasing shares of KWeb, and they're coming in at uh, the closing price of KWeb on that day. And we want to write those options exactly at that same closing price. So that's what you'll see when you see a very specific price. I noticed a 2733 strike there when you had the, the holdings up. You know, that's uh, a create came in. That was the closing price on KWeb that day for the shares that we received. So we wrote yeah. those options at the end of that day at that specific strike, which again is something you can do with flex options that may not be available on the uh, kind of general listed options on a fund, but it's kind of a nice feature. And then as we roll those options over time, if the options expire worthless and we're writing new options after 30 days, then we tend to write to the nearest strike. And um, you know, you, you may see that come up um, as well in the holdings over time. Very but, interesting, um, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. So um, those, those when you say European style options, do I have it correct where they can't be exercised, they, they have to go through the 30 days or the time has to expire. So there's, I would say more chance that it'll expire worthless, which is kind of what you want. If you're a cover call writer, you want to get that premium, but you don't want to give up your shares. Do I have that right? That's fair to say. Yeah, I okay. think, um, you know, specifically European style can only be exercised on expiration. Right. So if there's a chance that those options maybe go into the money during the 30 days or, you know, whatever time period that we're holding them. Um, there's no risk with the European style that we would have those shares called away that that option would be exercised against the fund. Okay, so that covers the uh, moneyness of the options in detail. What about the coverage? Are you co what's the percentage of the portfolio covered? Are you it's fifty percent, seventy five percent, a hundred percent? It's a hundred percent. So we're really looking wow, okay. to maximize income here. So every uh, every dollar of AUM in the fund is represented by K Web shares, and we look to write calls over the full exposure of those K Web shares. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so I already know what some audience members are going to add. I have the same question myself. If you're writing at the money, a hundred percent of the portfolio, isn't there a risk of just the nav that keeps going down and down and down? Cause you're, you're basically, you're giving up all the upside. So if KWeb keeps going up and up and up, yes, you're making those great premiums, but basically what, what does that mean? You're, you're capturing all the downside. You're not capturing any of the upside. So is there a risk of the NAV just keeps going down? Like, what would you say to investors who are worried about that? Sure, yeah, that's that's entirely fair and, and that's accurate. So what you get with K-Web is you get upside and downside exposure, unlimited, whatever the underlying benchmark does, that's the move in K-Web. What you get with Clip is you get, uh, you've sold essentially uh, a, a portion of the upside potential depending on where we're writing those options. And what you're getting in exchange for that is this phenomenal income. Um, so you're getting, you know, that, that, that difference is, uh, you know, income versus upside. And in both cases, you still have the downside risk. Yeah. And what we've seen in the back testing of this strategy is 
the income tends to smooth out the performance over time. So when you think about the income you're earning versus the upside you're giving up or the downside you may incur, you have a little bit of a performance cushion when you get that income and you have a smoother experience. So we think about, um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the growth vehicle is K-Web, the income vehicle is Clip, and we certainly don't expect those two to be used in isolation. We expect them to be kind of two ends of the barbell of a strategy that, depending on the investor's goals and interests, they can either dial up the income portion or dial up the growth portion. And you know, we've seen a couple of different clients already thinking about um, thinking about that balance. Pre-existing K-Web holders who might have shifted some assets uh, into Clip as they wait for K-Web to kind of break out of this technical uh, range-bound level that we've been trading at for a while. And maybe they'll shift some more of those Clip assets back to K-Web when they see K-Web break out. But in the meantime, it makes sense for them to get paid this, this great income uh, while they wait for that. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's got to make their own decision. I'm a pure income investor, so I would only be investing in Clip, but that's just my decision. I get what you're saying. If you want a little mix of both, you, you should have both because Clip, you're essentially giving up all the upside, but K-Web, you're getting all the upside. So you could mix and match. But another thing that I always tell my fellow income investors, you could always drip and kind of turn Clip into a growth strategy as well if you're dripping these massive distributions and speaking of which i just want to show it here so you guys declared quite a few here so the first one was 56 cents then a dollar 16 uh a dollar 109 103 and the latest one is 86 cents so this translates to like over 50 percent yield which is absolutely astronomical it's it, it, it's pretty crazy but it makes sense because they're at the money on something extremely volatile so a question i have for you is they seem to be going down is that purely because volatility has gone down? Like what, what makes the premium 86 cents that month or a dollar and three that month? Is it just volatility or is it what the nav of the fund is and volatility? I, I don't know if that question makes sense to That's you. A, yeah, it makes complete sense. And it's a clear question. Uh, and the, the answer is, is kind of both. And the way to think about this is if you look at it on a percentage basis, yeah. um, it, it would be helpful you know, I'll ask the, the team that, that manages our website to add a column for percentage uh, return, because as we distribute, that naturally has a decay factor on the share price. When a, a share of any single stock or equity trades X dividend, that value that's being paid out is removed from the share price. So if you look at on a percentage basis, we've managed to distribute right around 5% per month. Uh, that first month in January, uh, we launched the fund mid-month. We launched right. the January. So that's why that number is a little light on a percentage basis versus that 5%. Makes sense. But um, there's also an element, and again, we have a very short uh, sample size here that we're looking at. Um, if you look over the long term, uh, this income is really driven by implied volatility on K-Web options. So what we've tended to see since the fund's inception is implied volatility on K-Web options is around 40, call it, you know, somewhere between 35 and 45 in that range. And that approximately 40 implied vol tends to translate into uh, about a 5% um, you know, income over, over 30 days, somewhere between mid fours and low fives, uh, if you do that on a, you know, break that out over 30 days. Uh, and that's something that is market condition based. So we've yeah. seen implied vol on K-Web much higher at times that would indicate a yield, you know, somewhere upwards of 8% uh, or a, an, an income opportunity at those levels. And then we've seen over the longer term, looking back through history, a uh, lower implied vol somewhere in the mid 20s, high 20s, which would indicate a yield of somewhere around 3%, maybe three and a half percent. Per month, all you're saying, that's per Correct. month. Yeah, and that's the interesting <laughs> thing. And a lot of people, we get into these conversations and a lot of people think about, um, you know, yields, returns, um, however you want to think about, characterize this distribution. And um, they think in terms of an annual distribution. And it's really hard for us to predict on an annual basis, what implied ball on K-Web is going to do. Um, that That's um, anyone who can can predict that accurately, I'd love to meet them. Um, but I think it's certainly something that um, is compelling, you know, even if we're thinking about this in the most conservative environment possible, where we're looking at somewhere around a 3% uh, monthly return or monthly, you know, income potential, that's still phenomenal over the course of the year. I think there are very few other instruments that'll provide you that, that potential. Um, and it's been, you know, obviously a really, you know, healthy implied vol environment, uh, I'll call it over the last few months since we've launched the fund, that's allowed allowed the fund to distribute that approximately 5% per month. Wow. 5% per month, that's 60, 
ye annualized yield and you said conservatively three per that's when the volatility is low that three percent that's still 36 percent yield i'm assuming you're paying out all the, the all the premiums or are you doing like some competitors of these funds that write at the money that they're taking a portion and reinvesting it in the nav are you doing that at all or just giving out all the income yeah so there's no cap on on the income uh that we pay out the goal here is to maximize the income to our investors and really make this an income vehicle so we've been paying out um most essentially all of the income we've been taking in and due to the the timing of the writing of the options and when the fund was launched we're always a little bit uh, ahead so you may see a little bit of excess uh, cash in the fund when we pay out uh, a month end income number because we're a couple of weeks ahead from you know kind of when we launched the fund so uh, there is there is a small amount of of kind of um, you know call it cushion there but essentially we're we're paying out um, you know the overwhelming majority I'll call it of the the income the funds received my friend music to my ears everything you said is pretty much a dream come true for a pure income investor like myself and my audience members. Of course, you have to understand how this ETF works and, and what it's what you're actually investing and in. you're still investing in a very volatile sector, but potentially lots of growth uh, with KWeb. But you're just with Clip, you're just transforming that globe in that uh, growth into massive income potential because of that volatility. So that's all the questions I had. James, thanks so much for doing this. You answered all the questions uh all, all the answers were given and i have no further questions i think i kind of get everything here with this etf now so thanks again for doing this and let us know if you have any more of these great income etfs coming uh, and we'll have you back on the channel anytime yeah thank you thank you so much Adriano. it's been a pleasure uh to be here and, and i really appreciate it and um thanks so much take care good luck Hey, don't go yet. A few reminders before you leave. Did you know that I launched a YouTube loyalty membership program where for only $3 a month, you could become a PII Inner Circle member where you will gain access to exclusive content, exclusive videos and live streams, as well as other perks and benefits, including a really cool weekly opportunity report. That's right. If you're interested, just click on the little join button next to the subscribe button to see what it's all about. Also, make sure to follow me on Blossom and download Blossom. It's a social investing app, which is really cool. You could share your portfolio, follow other people's portfolios, including my own. My username is Adrian underscore PII. So download it with the referral link below. Not only is it free, but you could actually earn cash by taking these really small, quick one minute courses. Really awesome. It's a no brainer. Also, make sure to visit our website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca. That's where you could book a one-on-one -on -one private coaching session with yours truly, with myself, where you could ask me all the questions you want. All the information and booking information is on the website. Make sure to check out that video on the homepage there to see how to book a one-on-one -on -one properly. Also on my website, you could purchase my digital product, which I'm very proud of, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package. This is a reference tool or a companion tool that will help you build your own portfolio. So it has lists of funds, it has sample portfolios, and it covers both the Canadian and US stock markets. And the good news is you'll only ever have to buy it once because it comes with free lifetime updates. And my plan is really to update the version every single year. So make sure to pick it up. Also, I have Questrade and Passive referral links below. So Questrade is the broker that I personally use and Passive is the broker companion tool or companion or assistant that I use. Really cool program, really cool software. So I have referral links for both of those. Questrade, $50 of free trades. And Passive, I have half off for the Elite Membership. If you're interested in the Elite Membership, and even if you want to start out with the free membership and upgrade to the elite afterwards, use my referral code so you could still get that 50% off. And don't forget that the elite membership of Passive is 100% free if you use Questrade. For social media, we have a very successful and big Facebook group, private Facebook group with over 14,000 members where we all try to help each other out. So make sure to join that group. Information is, in, is below. We also have Instagram where you could follow us or more personal stuff uh, when it comes to our life here in Panama and there's LinkedIn as well. So as usual, everyone, how do I leave you? Continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time.